Right, hello. First of all, I've got a bit of an apology to make, I think. The content over the last few weeks in the workshop hasn't been that great, as it hasn't been interesting very much. Just been pottering about doing a few odds and ends on my own stuff. Um, so, I know it's not the most interesting, but obviously it's what goes on in the workshop. But thank you to all those who watch and keep commenting and liking. Um, I promise there will be some other stuff soon. Um, we've got to get on with that Defender in the next few weeks. Well, next few days, really. Um, I also need to get the MG van in and the BRM um, and get that conversion done. Uh, and then I'd like to get the Range Rover Classic in and get on with that. So there will be a few bits to deal with. Um, so yeah, so just really, I'm, I'm sorry for not doing a great deal. We haven't had many purchases and sales and stuff. So yeah, just bear with me. We will we will get on with it. I've just had a few things to do here. I've had a few projects I need to get sorted and get sold and move a few bits about and get ready for things. So yeah, so just a quick note to say thank you. Um, more stuff to come. Um, but I just want to get this in before this video just to show that I am conscious that um, more interesting content needs to follow. Good morning. It's another, it's not another Monday, it's a Tuesday. Bank holiday Monday yesterday, wasn't it? Um, right, today. I've got the Defender on the lift. Um, done a couple of shows this weekend, didn't it? All good. I just want to go around and do a few nut and bolt checks. It's in for tracking next Monday, so I just want to make sure all the tra track rings, or the, the steering bars are all loose. Well, not loose, but you know, free. Um, and just generally do a nut and bolt check, really, go around it. Um, I'm obviously going, I'll say obviously, I'm going to Wales on a green lane trip in October. So I'll bring it in and do a full service before we go, just to make sure. Um, I might quickly open up the diffs and just check all the fluids are all okay. Um, and you know, grease up the props and stuff while it's in the air, but nothing too major. Um, today's Tuesday, as I said, so tomorrow I am off to the launch of the new MG. Um, I know they're Chinese, I know they're not the same, but it's basically the new version of the MGF, I think it's called the Cyberstar. Um, so we're going to go and have a look at that tomorrow. Um, been invited to the launch of that, uh, and that's all I know so far. The Mini has sold on eBay. Um, the guy is due to collect it this week. He hasn't confirmed when yet, so fingers crossed he's not a messer. Um, and yeah, we'll just play it by here, I think. So first of all, I'm gonna have a wander around the Defender, check the wheel bearings, make sure everything spins freely, um, check the, the um, UJs and the props and things like that. So I will do that. Good morning. It's now Thursday. I've cut the bits of wood that I'm going to use as a um, floor in the back of the Defender. I need to buy, buy some hinges, but first, I've got someone coming to hopefully take the Mini away. They should be here in a minute. They're coming from Wales, so they're making the, uh, they're making the commitment. So fingers crossed they're happy. Uh, yesterday you saw, well, I don't know if you did actually, it's a separate video of the MG Cyberster launch. Um, so there's a video live on that if you want to see that, if you haven't already. Um, so yeah, so at the minute, I'm just sort of hanging around waiting for him to arrive. I also listed the Saab last night, and I've had a message about that already, and that might be being viewed today as well, so. Yeah, not much happening this week, because we're just kind of hanging around and out and about, but, you know, never mind, it is what it is, that's what happens. So I'll let you know about the Mini when they've been. There's a big hole where the Mini used to be. So that's gone then. Next car we've got to get rid of is the Saab. That's been advertised, so fingers crossed. Well, I say fingers crossed. Yeah, it needs to go. I don't want it to go, but it needs to. So yeah, we've got space now. Woo! Okay, so I've just dropped the Defender on some ramps, still held by the lift, but at a sort of normal-ish ride height. It's probably a bit higher than that, but what we're gonna do is just quickly undo the diffs and just check the oil level, make sure they're all all right. And then we're going to get it back on the floor. And I've picked up the hinges for the rear load cover. So I'm going to do that in a minute. But first of all is to check the diff levels. Obviously when you fill the diffs on a Discovery Stroke Defender, 
um, you basically fill it to the level of the fill plug. So when it starts coming out of there, you know you're at the right height. At ride height as well, by the way. Um, so this is about ride height, and it, I've just put it on there, so it makes it a bit easier to get underneath. So, Right, I'm going to undo those half inch. I've put some proper number plates on, because MOT coming up this week, but I have put them on Velcro, same as the wife's one, so I can swap them out nice and easy. Now, the Defender. It looks shit. But, once it's covered in carpet, and it won't be so glaringly obvious, it will perfectly do the job. I have decided to take the doors off though, um, because obviously opening the door, opening this and the doors would be a bit awkward. But you know, so once it's all carpeted, that's fine, and it's plenty strong enough to put other stuff in. Um, so I'll, you know, eventually it'll just be a flat floor. I've left that open so that I can put you know longer stuff down there. So yeah, looks shit at the moment, but it's functional. And hopefully, once it's carpeted, it'll be fine. I need to get some more of that carpet that I've got on the sub on the uh, compressor boxes from the show in, a, in next weekend. Um, but yeah, that'll do. Ain't cost me nothing other than the hinges. And yeah, should be fairly simple. I probably I, I might trim this back so it's level with this as well, but it gives me something to lift. So. You know, cheap and cheerful, and it'll do the job. So I'm happy with that for now. Until we can afford a proper drawer system. I think that's perfectly adequate. Right. Um, next job. I don't really know what that is at the moment. So I'm currently in the Defender. Um, I'm up in the air again. I'm having the tracking done, but I'm holding the wheel straight and adjusting the air so we can get the right level. Um, come out this morning, pulled it out of the garage, and another air pipe burst. Um, the main feed from the tank to the switches had burst. And when I've looked at it, it's actually pretty thin stuff. So I think it's just um, got too, you know, the pressure has popped it. So I've just ordered some more thicker plastic stuff to do that. So I'm in it, keeping the air suspension at the right height, uh, holding the wheel straight and having the tracking done. Okay. Today we are MOTing the Jag, hopefully. Hopefully it passes. And then come the 1st of October, hopefully we'll get it taxed and get it out. Um, another note to, thing to say is the Saab has sold, unfortunately. That has gone. That was on Facebook Marketplace for 24 hours and that was it. So, sold, gone. Um, Defenders in, it blew the main feed line from the tank to the switches. So I've got new pipe on order, thicker plastic stuff. So hopefully that will uh, hold up to the 150 PSI. I need that really to turn up today, um, which is Wednesday, because I've only got Thursday before to do anything. Because Friday morning, first thing, we are off to LRO at Belvoir, no, Beaver Castle. Um, hence a like, couple of days I've been working on the caravan just getting a few bits and pieces done ready to take that away and obviously it'll be his first proper distance towing with the caravan so that'll be interesting so anyway first jobs first let's go get this MOT'd bit of a disaster on the MOT ramp we have leakage Ugh. seems to be coming down both sides of the gearbox Right, we're back at the workshop. Oh, you can't really see much, can you? Yeah, back at the workshop. Got the jag on the lift to try and find this water leak. Not a drop. No idea. No idea at all. I mean, there's evidence of it on this earth pipe. Um, I mean, other than that, on the MOT ramp, it was pouring out. Here, it's not. I've checked the water level. It's still up. So what on earth was that? Um, oh, this exhaust clamp is leaking. Um, I want to do some work on the exhaust anyway. So I'm going to have to get, I think I'll get the DPF off 
and the cats off and then I should have access, more access to the um, pipes at the back, the um, matrix pipes. I mean, I don't know exactly where it was leaking. I, I don't know. But yeah, I'll have all the exhaust off once it's cooled down tomorrow, probably. And then, um, yeah, go from there. How bizarre. Well, other than the mystery coolant leak, that I still don't know what it is, um, it f actually failed on a brake line that's um, weeping. It's uh, like a flexi, so I've ordered that, but it's not here till tomorrow. And it also was advised on the rear anti-roll bar link, so I'm just changing those. It had this little cover over the top. Um, I suppose you could probably get to it through it, but it was just easy. It was it was torn anyway, so I just pulled it off. Um, and yeah, they're just like normal drop links. So just bolted at the top and bolted at the bottom. So I'm just going to change them over both sides. Get that advisory off. I have found the problem with the Jag. I found out where it's leaking from. I put it on the owner's club and there was a couple of suggestions. One of which was a thermostat housing. Now, that is, um, there is a, where are we? Here, this manifold here with all the pipes on. Apparently it's called a thermostat housing, but it doesn't actually have a thermostat in it. Um, that has been weeping. I can see it. When it was running, it was all wet around it. And I'm guessing it was running down the back of the V and over the gearbox. So I've got to have all that out. No idea how that all comes out yet. Um, obviously, this has got to come off. That's got to come off. Yeah, interesting. There is a metal replacement available. Um, so I'm going to look into that. But this will have to stay parked for now. I've just run my new main feed. I was just pumping the bags up. Bang. This isn't giving me much confidence. The new Aerosus bag. God knows, God knows. <sighs> we better, um, yeah, we better contact them. And in the meantime, I better put one of the original ones on. But I'm not holding much hope for the rest of them. Right, I'm gonna do a little mod to this. Let's see if you can spot the difference. So here it is now. There we go. Can you tell the difference? Um, obviously it's a steering wheel. In the picture that looks a lot brighter than what it actually is it's the same color as the seats but obviously it's fresh paint I suppose there's a couple of little tiny bits just where the masking has just pulled the paint on the edge so I'll just have to get that touched in take it back to the uh, body shop but I'm sure it won't be a problem I had this steering where it was um, silver it's been in the shed for years so I thought you know what I'll just have it painted to match that so that's done as I say on camera it looks a completely different color but actually it's very very close so there you go. And lastly, the brake hose has turned up for the Jag. In the picture, it looked bra it looked braided, but obviously it's not. Um, on the actual pipes on the Jag, on the back, I can see good ridge written on them. On the front, I can't see anything. That's why I thought it might have been a factory version. And also when you Google it, I can't find any braided lines for an XJ6 of that era. Again, which made me wonder whether because the front ones are already braided, but they're not. But I think what I'll do, to be fair, the other one doesn't look that great anyway. I think I'm gonna buy another one and just replace them with standard ones because the Goodridge ones do look a bit rotten and, and horrible. So I think I'll just do both while I'm doing the brakes. So I'll get another one ordered, but that's a job for next week. Okay, I went to the body shop and just said about the edges, just need to touch them in. And he said, no, give it back to me, I'll do it again. Also, he, just, he said, why don't we do matte lacquer? because obviously the red on the door cards and the seats are matte. So he said, if I do it in matte lacquer, that will be as close as you're gonna get, I think. So yeah, he's gonna take it back, redo it and put the matte lacquer on. So we'll see it next week. So I am now packing up and first thing in the morning, heading off to um, Beaver Castle for the Land Rover owner show. Um, I don't know if this will be the end of the video or whether I'll just get some footage while I'm there, just a little walk around just to see what it's all about. Um, so if I do get some more footage, I'll see you in a minute. If I don't, I'll catch you in the next one. We made it. 130 miles, took three and a half hours because I stick to the back roads, didn't go up the motorway. And we're here. I've been dreading this drive for a long time, but we made it. So just wait for my friends to turn up. Let's have a good weekend. That was very close. 